Welcome to our new NanoStream Customer Experience Lab located in Seattle. Today, we will highlight the workflow that is the foundation of spatial discovery using the Geomix DSP. During our first session, we will cover automated sample preparation for Geomix DSP, morphology marker options, and how to load prepared samples onto Geomix DSP. To enable high quality and user-friendly workflows, our company has partnered with some of the best-in-class companies, such as Leica Biosystems. Whether analyzing RNA or protein, sample preparation workflows can be performed on Leica bond systems. Not only does this increase the efficiency of the workflow and reduce hands-on time, but it also ensures robust and reproducible methods. Once the reagents are prepared and loaded onto your Leica bond system, our pre-configured workflows can be implemented in your lab by following our Geomix DSP manual. Approximately after four hours, the samples will be ready for profiling reagent and morphology marker incubation. Morphology marker selection is key to Geomix experimental success. The platform is compatible with any fluorescent antibody. Nanostring and AppChem partnered to provide custom protein content for quantification based on large IHC catalog AppChem provides. This content can also be utilized for ROI selection. In addition to fluorescent antibodies, Geomix DSP is also compatible with RNA scope probes for ROI selection. Choose from pre-selected combinations or any of the 21,000 RNA scope probes to select ROI for your RNA workflow. After completing slide preparation, which is similar to IHC or ISH, we will put our slides into the tray and then we will put the tray into the instrument and load buffer. Next, we will be ready to enter our slide records and scan parameters. Welcome back to the CX Lab experience. During this session, we will cover ROI selection and segmentation on Geomix DSP. A fluorescent image with up to four colors is generated to enable selection of region of interest or ROI on this tissue. You as the user can choose these ROIs from anywhere on your laptop. Geometric profiling allows us to choose circles, squares, or even polygons. This would be a great tool when you have pretty homogeneous regions like immune cells and the tumor segregated within one tissue or across tissues in your cohort. Geometric profiling was utilized in David Rim's Nature Communications article in 2020. Many users can also create rules for segmenting the ROIs. This would let morphology of the tissue determine the uh, boundaries of the area of illuminations or AOIs to enable 100% cellularity. For example, users can create 
tumor and TME segments across a tissue sample as shown on this example. Selected ROIs are illuminated with UV light to release barcodes from DSP probes. And then these DSP probes are deposited into a 96 valve plate. During the next session, we'll go over how the cleaved DSP barcodes will be analyzed. The Geomix DSP analysis suite will map the gene expression data back to the originating tissues locations. Welcome back to the CX Lab experience. During this session, we will cover DSP collation plate preparation and analyzing spatially resolved RNA and protein data. The released DSP barcodes are prepared via a standard library preparation, so they can be read out on Illumina sequencers. The data can be mapped specially back to the originating region of interest. Samples can now be loaded onto your Illumina sequencer. Depending on your experimental design and the instrument capacity, you can read up to 760 ROIs from a single geomics experiment in a single Illumina run. Here we have an XDIC 2000, which will allow us to easily read hundreds of protein or RNA analytes. Once the FASTQ files are generated, they'll be converted to digital code counts and then uploaded back to geomics DSP instrument. Let's do a high-level orientation of Geomics DSP analysis suite now. First, we will initiate a data analysis study by adding all the scans we wanted to our study. The data analysis screen is divided into three panes and a taskbar. Here we describe the functions of each pane and the interactions between all three. The scan pane is shown on the left side and contains individual viewers of the scans. In the middle pane, we have our datasets and probe lists. On the right, we have our visualization pane, which shows the various graphs. In this case, this is our QC graph. The middle datasets pane lists all datasets and probe groups associated with the current study. The visualizations pane is on the right. Visualizations are visual representations of the data set selected and probes selected, and the adjustments applied to the data set from those probes. Now I'm going to open another study. Here we can see the data has been QC'd and normalized. Once you normalize the data, you can see in your visualizations pane different graphs, including pathway maps, pathway tables, bar graphs, correlation plots, box plots, PCA plots, trend lines, and we can view heat maps. I'm going to end with clicking on a data point on the data visualizations pane, and you'll notice that ROI associated with it will be zoomed in on the left pane of the screen, presenting 
seamless integration of the images and the digital cards. Thanks for joining our customer experience lab sessions.